Uh, this morning we want to bring our sharing from the book of Jude to a close. And um, we've been doing well. It has been a journey and we want to do the conclusion today. Uh, we want to read the other verses from verse number 17. If you can put them on the screen, we will read them. If you have NIV, it will be great. Uh, we can read all together. Hallelujah. Let's all read together if we can. But, dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, build yourself up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourself in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. To others, show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupt flesh. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and without great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. And the church said, Amen. Amen. One time the, the wife of uh, Martin Luther came from her room and she was, she, she was dressing up and she walked out and she met Luther very sad. Luther was very sad. He looked very sad like something has, um, has happened. He tried to encourage, but the guy was so down. The guy was so low. So she went back and dressed herself with the morning dress. The dress for morning, which is normally black. You go everywhere black. And she walked out again through the sitting room. And then Martin asked, where are you going? She said, I'm going to a funeral. Then she was asked, whose funeral? God's funeral. Then Martin looked at her, his wife and said, God, what is happening? Pope wants to kill me. The devil wants to kill me. And now my wife is confused. He knelt down and thanked God. I want to encourage you, it doesn't matter how tough and how difficult it is, God is alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is alive. Alive, alive, alive forever. Oh, Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Jesus is alive forevermore. Now you can stand. We want to worship God just a little bit. He's alive. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him.
one thing is true that we have come to praise you. Not men, not institution, but we have come to praise you. And dear Father, we pray that you'd minister to us like you've never done before, because this is a new day. This is the end of the month that was called May. And dear Father, we are just about to enter into the month that is called June. Therefore, Lord, our hearts are full of gratitude because of what you have done for us. We honor you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. We may get seated. Our, our topic this morning is how to avoid spiritual disaster. Spiritual disaster. Remember, we, the whole theme is staying spiritually straight. Staying spiritually straight. How to avoid spiritual disaster. There are many kinds of disasters in life. Some of those disasters are a result of nature. Like what is happening sometimes in Budalangi and, and uh, Lower Nyakach. Especially Nyando, when Nyando River floods up, what happens in some parts of Moranga when there is a landslide that because of how Moranga uh, looks like, some places when the landslide comes, it covers some of the houses. Disasters come, can come from earthquake, fire, it can come from floods. Other disasters that come, come from terrorism and so on, and we, Kenya, we cannot talk about uh, that so much. We know it is happening both in, the, in some churches. Uh, they come and throw in grenades and, um, and so on and so forth. So disasters come and happen. Also, uh, other reason for disasters in our, come because of our own doing. Sometimes we put ourselves in some very interesting places and then disaster happens. Some of us here have at one time gotten into some financial disaster. And financial disaster sometimes comes because of our overspending. You know, you overspend, you're not living in your budget, so you overspend and you have a financial disaster. And sometimes it's so hard for you to come out from a financial disaster. Some of disasters, financial disasters, you want to live a class which is not yours. Remember, yeah, last Sunday I told you we are not the same ranks, you know? We are not the same ranks, you know? Bless God for those that can do what they are doing. And then thank God for yourself and do what you can do by the grace of God. Amen? Don't tell people where your, your clothes is when they are saying it looks important. Important. Just tell them it is. Because it is. And you are blessed. You know, the biggest problem is that when they say you look smart, you say... Come on, get you in your mutush. Now, the, the minute you go that direction, what you're saying is that I'm not worth the blessings that the Lord has brought my way. It's like you want to blame God, but God has given you the best. So some of the financial disasters are coming from, from ourselves. Um, disasters. A husband and wife um, had some... They used to act in... Um, in a, in a circus. Both husband and wife were in the circus. And uh, one day, the wife ran away with the lion handler. You know, the guy that handles lion, you know? And he was huge. You know, this guy who, and then the, the lion does some few things and, you know, you know or, or leopards and so on. So he ran up with this, um, with this man. And the husband was, you know, he felt so dejected, you know, because the, because, um, the wife had gone. And the guy, the guy who had taken his wife was so courageous. He comes and tells them, Utadu, Utadu, you know, Utadu. Well, this husband did not know what to do um, because, Utadu <laughs> namnagani. So the husband asked, this is a disaster. I don't know where I'm going to find another woman of her caliber. That's the only thing that he said. Sijui nitapata muke upande gane. But just like there are physical disasters in life, there are also spiritual disasters. Jude wrote this letter to one believers not to be deceived by false teachers. He wanted to show the believers 
how to keep from falling away from their faith. Here, in the text that we have read tonight, we are going to look at certain things that Jude wants to address to us as his, as the people of God, so that we can avoid spiritual disasters in our lives. Spiritual disaster in our lives, because disasters will happen, and they do happen. So he mentions four ways to, for us to avoid a spiritual disaster in our lives. The first thing he brings to us, he says this, we can avoid spiritual disaster in our life by remembering God's word. God's word. He says this, verse 17 to 19, dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They say to you, in the last days or last time, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. The key word there is to remember. To remember. The key word there is to remember. A woman met another woman friend and they, she had this uh, chain which has... Um, you know, some chains look like they have like a box, like a smoke, thing. Have you ever seen them? So when they met, so this other one is asking, hey, you have a wonderful chain. What is in that? Uh, what is in that? Now, the, 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 the other lady said, ya bwana yangu. So the other one said, but your husband is still alive. He said, yes, I know. Lakini nyuele yake, inaisha. So nimeweka niwe nikikumbuka. Jude is trying to tell us it's good for us to remember. Because it is when we don't remember, we fall into some various challenges of life. Akikuyu sing a song and said, Nime hiya kuriganero. It is seen to forget. Because when you forget then, you don't know. If that, no wonder the Bible keeps on telling us to go back. It keeps on pushing us to remember. So that when we remember, then we'll be strong because we know the Lord God whom we have trusted in. It is sin to forget the word of God. So the writer here is telling us, remember. The word remember in verse 17 actually is a command. The Lord is telling us, remember. It is not a choice. Remember if you want. No, 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 no. Remember, you have to. It is required for us to remember. Proverbs 4, 4 verse 21. Don't ever forget my words. Keep them down within your heart. Don't forget the word of the Lord. What is it that Jude says, tells us not to forget, but he tells us to remember? He tells us to remember three facts concerning the word of God. Number one, who spoke it? Because you see, somebody will come and tell you the Lord says. We want to know which Lord. Because there are so many other Lords. Who spoke it is very, very important. Why in the 70s I never followed the Branhamites is because the statement they said they wanted to follow was a statement of Paul. And then I said, Paul and Jesus, who am I going to obey? I'm going to obey Jesus. Jesus is the one who gave a command. He says, go ye there for baptizing everyone in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, whoever says anything else, it is good business for them. So I said, no, 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 no way. I want to hear what the Lord says. Now, remember who said it, because it is crucial. Who said what? The apostles, the sent ones, the ones that were with the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember who spoke it. So Jude is saying that the apostles spoke it. That means that whatever you hear another teacher teaching you, other than what is written in the Bible, then we need to believe the Bible. I normally say this, when I don't understand and I don't want to be confused, I take the word of God literally. It malala, it simply means lala. You know, sometimes... You know, there are people who say, Ikisema lala inasema ya kiroho. Fine, but if I'm not understanding it, then I will go to the literary one, which says lala, you go on the floor. If you do that, you will not error. 
I hope I'm talking to someone. Because the biggest problem is when people tell us what the word of God says, and then we are confused, but we follow them in our confusion. I pray that the church that I'm speaking to this morning will always remember and seek the word of God. And when confused, go literally to the word of God. You know, some of you are looking at me like, uh, yeah. If you, if you get confused, I know, do you get what I'm saying? I'm saying when there is some confusion and people want to tell you, apana isem you kule hi, kuna kitabu igine iritoka, ni hi, tafuna hi makaratasi, I would rather tafuna the Bible than this one. Because the biggest challenge is the interpreter, the people who want to interpret the word of God. When you are in confusion, look at your neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, when you are in confusion, take the word of God literally. Panda mulimani enda ukaombe. Wacha kusema ni kuomba ile ya kimoyo moyo. You know, because that's where people get confused. You know, in this country, there are people called waombaji. Have you met them? Waombaji are good people. They pray, but not for nothing. Two, before they pray for you, they have to know who you are. And once they know who you are, they gather information for you. In actual fact, some of them, anakutishaka mbaka unastuka. Shule ulisoma, mulisoma na nani, uliolewa na nani, ukafanya nini, mtoto wako wakwaza anaitua nani. Yani they come to you, ata shoshu wanu anaitua nani. Because they have done some little research. Baka unashanga. Ala faina reko kwambia, si ule mama hako upando wakushoto anaitua regina. And you know, sometimes we think Waombaji walianza hivi. Waombaji walianza Nigeria. Nigeria, in the 70s, there were Waombaji wakali sana. Actually, they'll come and tell you, this thing that you're going through is so difficult. But I'm going to pray for you, man of God. I'm going to go to the mountain for 40 uh, days, pray and fast for you. When I come down, it will be over. But then he tells you, but for this, you need to pay so much. Because demons, to chase this one, you need to pay this one. And to change this one, you have to pay this one. So it never started here. We are just learning. We are actually coming. It is this man who comes lately. John come lately. Asante. Who spoke it? So it is good to know when, even when the apostles, I don't get what they are saying. I'll look at the other scriptures that talk the same. If it is God who spoke, then I'll go to God's way. And I'll go literally, then I'll not fall into a spiritual disaster. Who spoke it? The second thing that we need to remember is what they spoke. What did they say? Jude tells us to expect false teachers so we aren't caught off guard and become paralyzed under solutions when they invade the church. He also gives us five characteristics to look for. He says there, there will be scoffers. These scoffers are people who love at the doctrines. They love at the authority of God's word. They scoff it. They laugh at it. He also says they are selfish in that they follow their own desires. Thirdly, he says in verse 19, they are splitters because they will try to divide the church and divide you and divide others. They are, they are splitters. They are also sinful in that they follow their natural instincts. And lastly, they are spiritless because they don't have the Holy Spirit within them. That's what Jude is trying to tell us. So I'm looking at this person who is speaking. I want to see, does he have the Holy Spirit? Or is he speaking from his stomach and his mind and his knowledge? Does he have, have the spirit? So it is absolutely essential for you to remember God's word in order to avoid a spiritual disaster for your life. One of the major reasons why some Christians have experienced terrible disasters in their life is because they have forgotten what the Bible says. And you know, it, it has been demonstrated here many times. A preacher might come here and say, please, I want you to open for us Acts 29 verse 1. And you see everybody looking for Acts 29 verse 1. Because first of all, you don't know how many chapters Acts has. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Or somebody who made fun here, he said, Genesis chapter 60 verse 15. And all of you are going to Genesis 60 verse 
Let's know what the word of God says. Let's know what the word of God says. Remember why they spoke it. Psalms 37 verse 31. They remember God's teaching and they ne never take a wrong step. Remember God's word and you never go the wrong way. I want all of us to read, if we can, Psalms 119 verse 11. If you can put it on the screen. Verse, Psalms 119 verse 11. This is a, a very good verse. It says, let's read together. I have hidden your word in my heart. That? Let's say it again. I? I that? If you don't want to have spiritual disaster, hide the word of God in your heart and do it every morning as you wake up. Hide it. Remembering what the Bible says is important, but it isn't enough in itself. To keep you from having a spiritual disaster is your life. So what you need is not only that. You need to continue to the next uh, step to avoid our spiritual disaster. The second step that uh, Jude tells us is to building yourself up. Tell your neighbor, building yourself up. Um, I know some of us lose weight and then we become floppy. Because we only lose weight, but we don't exercise our muscles. We don't tone our muscles. So someone might look very, very funny. Very, very funny. I met someone whose, whose belly, because of losing weight, was like a, a blanket. You know. He always your name, Mahari Pegine. You know, you can't go to the gym, you can't but then, unakaka kidogo unaangalia. <laughs> but you know what happened. The guy lost weight, but never toned the muscles. So the stomach is there. Haina kitu, lakini meteramuka ni kama mfuko. Build yourself up. So that you will have muscles that can help you build yourself up. Build yourself up. Oh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to say it. In verse 20 to 21, it says, But you, dear friends, build yourself up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourself in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring to you eternal life. In other words, you need to know, the key word is here to build yourself up. Jijenge. Jijenge. Na tukikuita ujijenge ya ukuji, tunakuita mande ujijenge kwa maombi ukuji, Bible study kuja tujijenge ukuji. Wewe umeamua kabisa, 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 wewe ni wajumapiri. Na in actual fact, ukiulizwa seli yako, unasema seli yangu ni ya bishop. Na diyo inakuwa na watu wengi. Now the problem wa seli ya bishop, ukipata janga, hata kukutafuta, inakuwa kashida. Uyu, uyu anakujaka na shati nyekundu. Kwa sababu siku moja ulikuja na shati nyekundu uh, mwezi akakuona sasa tukikuangalia na shati nyekundu kama leo tunakuta ai leo si ulivaa nyeusi sasa tunakuangalia tukuoni kwa sababu ulishabadilisha you need to belong somewhere and i pray that god will help you if we are going to build ourselves up and protect each other from disasters we have to belong we have to belong and that one we cannot overemphasize. I know some of you are okay. And that's what people, in actual fact, I like the statement that people say, Bishop, Mimi see any encounter. Now, I'm not going to encounter what you You see, can you imagine? If you have an encounter, then somebody says, Come on, Bishop, and you have a encounter. Come on, Bishop, and you have a encounter. You know those kind of challenges. You know those kind of challenges. You know those kind of challenges. Kuna mama moja pale, sijui dada moja pale, sijui ndugu moja pale, anaangaliaga watu vibaya. You miss the point of building yourself up because of others. A statement was made here yesterday. Only thing that I can do for you is to take you to where the river is. I tell you, this is the river. Sasa, kunywa maji nani anakunywa? Ni mimi. 
kama unywi sasa shida yako kukataa kunywa na mimi ninywe nitakuwa na afya nzuri sasa utaanza kuweka mambo ambayo si ya kweli you start saying things that are not true and they are not right why because i gave you water you don't want to drink it and we are drinking it and lo- the lord is blessing us amen haya unajua kuna watu hapa wataenda mbali kwa nini kwa sababu wameniamini wataenda mbali they believe in what i tell them when i tell them it is possible they believe in actual fact there is one person in the church here who this is the statement he, uh, she tells others mimi bishop wangu sina shida akikula hata kuokoka sitaokoka akikula don't you think that is a very powerful statement hiyo ni kumaanisha nikisema kuna shamba analete pesa kwa sababu nikikula then hakuna wokovu which na hiyo ina ni challenge sana that is called faith but some of us stretch yourself Una, unafanya hivi kidogo so wale wameji stretch wameji stretch and i said once you stretch yourself you cannot go back there are people here whose life because of stretching last year they will never ever go back hamna washajifanya hivi arudi imekaukia pale sasa tunaomba bwana aimwagie mafuta angalau iwe inyoro iwe inyoroku eh, lakini hapa wengine ni actual fact yesterday somebody said something which i thought is very interesting he said uh, by the way those that did not come for yesterday's meeting you missed a lot uh, because he na watu walikuja walikuwa wamekaa huku wakakaa kule wakakaa huku wakakaa kule wakakaa kule hawakuwa wamejaa yani ya kufinyana lakini walikuwa wamejaa humu amen sasa mtu mmoja akasema mambo na mimi akasema when i grow up i'll go with the first class sababu alisema first class kuna kitanda unalalaga ukishakula unalala na ikasema na hiyo ni poa lakini kwenda na hiyo ni maratano ya tikiti ile ya kawaida tunaelewana eh yani <laughs> sasa shida ukishaambiwa price what you think ai hii pesa na vile naipata na shida siwe kwenda tu hapana hapana nita afadhali niende na sasa shida ni moja tu ama ni kuspea hapo the, the, the point the point that he was bringing which 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 made sense is that because of working so hard are you hearing working so hard 5 to 11 at night working so hard ukiambiwa tu hata ule 2000 ati uende pale mkae mkule 2000 na mke wako si unajua vile utamwambia <laughs> so he was you know he made the sense actually he made sense he says but when you invest when you invest unaweza kula kwa sababu ni investment inakujaga ni kama hii bonus ya ya sako kanisa tuliingia kwa sako i don't know whether i told the church this he tatuliingia inaitwa stima sako sis church bonus walitupatia na 11% ya pesa tulikuwa tumeweka kule na tulikuwa tumeweka milioni 14 mwambie jirani yako 14 na na hiyo si ya si ya cathedral cathedral mtapewa habari yake <laughs> Te 11% na utoe pesa ya serikali ile inaitagwa withholding na whatever toa ya serikali Yaani tukapata zaidi ya milioni moja. Sasa jamani nini? Asitaki kuambia hiyo. Wacha ni save you for that one. But the point that I'm bringing is when you invest na bonus ikuje. Mimi na Alice tunasemaga kwanza twende tukajienjoy. Ni kusema tu si kusema hata si tulipewa. Tulikuwa na kabonus ketu tulipewa. Kila mtu alikuwa na twake. Na si tudogo tuwake kwa nini investment now the person who invests and the one who doesn't now the problem is when you see the one who has invested going places and you want to go na hiyo yako ni ile nimekuambia ni 8 to 11 paka unasema na hii kanisa hii hii nafikiria 
Kuna matajiri hapa sana. There, there are some of you who believe the home cell that I come from is very rich. Keep on believing it. But we start saving in January. Kidogo kidogo alafu tunajivinjali. You know, especially last year when we went by air to Mombasa. There are people who said, Nadege, kaime beshai. You will continue gossiping. But the secret is, you start saving. So I thought it made sense. Na nikaona uyo jamaa amenikata mahali. Kwa sababu kweli pesa ya mshahara. Hai, wezi itumia hiki holera holera. Ya mshahara. Imekuwa kwa tumeyesabu yote. Hata kabla ijakuja. Alafu, emergency ikuja. Hakuna. Iyo atutaki. But he made the point. And some of us got the point. Building yourself up. If we read Ephesians, all of us, Ephesians 4 verse 15, in the message translation, if you can put it for us, Ephesians 4 and verse 15, in the message translation, it says what? God wants us to grow up, to know the whole truth and tell it in love, like Christ in everything. We take our lead from Christ, who is the source of everything we do. God wants us to grow up. The key word is to grow up. Amen. To grow up. So that when we are supposed to be teachers, we are not still babies in the things of God. We grow up. So Jude gives us four ways to help us grow up and become stronger believers. And these are, number one, through the foundation of faith. Holy faith in verse 20. Holy faith. If you were going to build a building, what would you start with, it, with first? You start with the foundation. The faith Jude is talking about here has to do with the doctrines that are taught in the Bible. There is a sense in which our personal faith in Jesus is the basis of our growth. But even that depends on what the Bible says. Even that. Depends on what the Bible says. You can't be a strong Christian if you ignore the Bible. A Kikuyu song that was sung many, many years ago. Kukwira tu diege domo gate baniairomo shaitani ne muruanyu kwa muchera genake. At first I thought that was a very strong song. For you that never had, you don't have it in your vernacular, let me tell you what it says. It said, I'm telling you, we go to church, you refuse. Is the devil your brother? So that you can be walking with it. If you listen to it that way, it's so sarcastic. Shetani ni dugiyako. Munatebea nae. Please, let's honor the word of God. The, the other part, Bishop likes the other part. Because the other part has kept some of the Kikuyu believers very poor. Because it continues saying this. And some people believe that. Yet the Lord has died for us. We were reminded by the bishop, Mark, because he was here. So the first thing is we can grow strong in the word of God. When you don't understand it, ask it. Last week I was speaking in Rungai, and the first day I spoke, uh, I, I talked about Nicoletians. And there was a captain of the, of, uh, who is a captain. He used to fly Kenya Airways when it was East African Airways. He did not wait for me to go. He said, Bishop, Nicoletia now ni akina nani. I thought, some of you when you are told Nicoletia, hata uulizi, unaenderea tu. Sada ukikuta pale uenderea na Nicoletia. Nicoletia ni nani? Yau Nicoletia ni nani? So I had to explain to him. And that is what we are supposed to do. What you don't understand, Ask. And if they ask you and you don't know, tell them, give me time. So that when the kwawiro mavitabu yako kuubwa, pastor, uangalie, idi urudu musaidie. Usijifanya unajua, ati nikoletian, uwe najua, niko, 
Letia, Nico, Letia. <laughs> it's like a, a pastor in this church called Mwithi who tells us in Tanzania, technology ni teke. Eh? Technology ni teke? Teke li nalo kujia. So I thought, So how do I grow up? I grow up in prayer. Power of prayer. Don't be cheated by people. Prayer works. Prayer works. And there are some of you that have testimonies of prayers that you prayed or somebody prayed for you and God responded. You don't want to fall into some spiritual disaster? Be a prayerful person. Omba. Omba. Na ukisha omba, omba. Tena, omba. Prayer and doctrine go together in spiritual growth. Doctrine is good, but sometimes we can think we are so spiritually strong that we don't even need God. Therefore, we need to pray to keep on energizing us so that we can keep on growing in the Lord. Prayer and the Bible study are essential elements for spiritual growth. Like now, for example, here we were taken through the altars and we learned a lot about the altars. Then we were taken through some covenants. Uh, then we were taken through crowns. And some of you, you know, have no idea. Please, when we tell you there is a Bible study on a Wednesday, avail yourself. When we tell you, we tell you there is a home cell discussion on Thursday, avail yourself. There is where we build ourselves up. Bless the name of the Lord. Thirdly, this is what Jude is saying through the labor of love labor of God's love. This doesn't mean that we have to try to keep ourselves saved. Neither does it mean that you have to do something to make God love you more than he already does. But rather it is talking about keeping your life in a place where you can experience the fullness of God's blessing or the love of God in your life. A place, strategic place where you can station yourself so that God can release his love for you. John 15, 9 says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. It's like drawing a circle here and saying, everybody in this circle here is where the love of God is. Meaning anybody outside there is not in the love of God. And God wants us to stay in his parameters where the love of God is. Can, can help us. Bless the name of the Lord. Then Jude says, through the hope of heaven. He says, what can help me build up or I can be built up when I think about heaven? Because friends, if there is something that you and I ought to be always conscious about is where we are going. Because we will go there. And I don't want to preach to you so that you go. I don't want you to go. Actually, I want to be bereako. So that when you say at a bishop wetu wako pale bere, siyo kusema bishop wetu wata tumuoni, atujui ya lipitia gani, njia hili ya lipita tumuoni hapa, na tunataka kupewa crown. Bishop wako hili ya gani? No, I want to be there. So when I tell you to be faithful, I want to be faithful. That's why I don't follow your tithe and offerings. My goodness. Pesa yako sifuati na kuombea tu. Mimi sifuati ati oh hiyo bagi ya sadaka imepitishia ime wapi sifuati hiyo ni kazi ya oveti na gashuru na hiyo na bwana anawabariki si wapiga gii simu ati uliona imekuja namna gani that's not my business mimi thursday nikiona niona watu wangu hawa na mshahara naambiaga hawa sasa mimi naingia kwa mao kwa maombi ili mkija jumapili mtoe sadaka kubwa Na wewe wakati umetoa sadaka kubwa na huko umepanga. Hujuagi nini mimi nimekuombea? <laughs> nini mimi nimekuombea? Umekuja na sadaka unasema nitoe hii nitoe, nitoe hii nitoe alafu natoa ile kubwa. Nicha kuombea. Ha, ah, God is good. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. The hope of heaven, matuini, heaven. Where all of us know if it was not because of the call of heaven. I, I know sometimes <laughs> uh, we got saved when we had nothing. 
But I'm telling God, now with it, I want to love God more. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now with it, nataka kumpenda Mungu zaidi. Sitaki kumpenda nikiwa na elfu moja, ati naweza toa mia moja na nifanya hivi tithe. Nataka kumpenda wakati milioni. Hmm, ndio inaingia kwa account. Nifanya elfu mia moja namna hii. I mean, actually I said and I still believe it. One of these days, because God is going to bless me so much, I might get to a level where the allowance I get here and the money that I get from outside or from wherever my business is and so on, it may fika mahali here hapa staki. I don't know. Now, whether you believe it or not, mi ndio ni naomba. Naomba nifike pahali kama, ninasikia ka wengine wako America, kina nini, kina, hao di wanapeaga kanisa. Oh man, can you imagine inakuja hapa nasema hiyo mjengo pande hii ni mimi na Alice tunajenga. I'll get there, but I'll still love the Lord. And what will keep me saved is because of the place I want to go. I don't want God to build me a cabin in a corner. I want a mansion because he said he went to prepare a place for me. I'm looking forward. Unajua kuna wengine wanasema hata afadhali ndiwe doorkeeper kwa upande ule. Hapana, I'm not going to be a doorkeeper. Why should I? I want to go where my mansion is. Bingo. Does it motivate you? It should keep you and your foundation strong of the place we are going. Bless the name of the Lord. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.8 says, The more you grow like this, the more you become productive and useful in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as you grow, you become productive. As you, the Lord, the word of the Lord gets in you, you become productive. In the things of the Lord. The third way to avoid spiritual disaster in your life is by showing concern for others. Now let me say this with all due respect and humility. When God blesses you in your family, that wewe diyo uko nayo, si ya kuringa nayo, ni hili usaidie wengine. I know wengine tukibarikiwa ni kuenda turukiza, maunana huyu ni my brother huda mkubwa. Huyu wana kitu, that's not your business. Your business is who you hana kitu watoto wake wewe somesha. Wacha 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 unajua kuna ile vita unasema wewe ndio hakuna wako chiara. No, forget about it. If God has blessed you, he knows kuna watu nao kazi yao itakuwa ni No, I'm serious about this. I know some of you say hapana hapo bishop mimi sitasaidia mtu wa aina hiyo. Mungu amekubariki na amekuinua mahali. Wacha kuingana na wengine kama hamtoi atutajengea mama wewe umepewa jengea mama na utabarikiwa na uambie mama na wewe mama hata nikikubariki ukumbuke yule mkubwa ndiye mkubwa unajua kuna pahali roles zinabadilishwa kwa kwa sababu ulijengea mama jengea <laughs> oh. Na ukijenga kuna mama tukiwajengea nilijengea mama siku moja nikamwachia nyumba imebaki hivi ilikuwa ya mbao nyumba ambayo ni nzuri sana kwa nyumba ambayo nimewaka inaangalia hivi niliporudi nikakuta imebomolewa inaangalia <laughs> na siku piga keren sema oh you like it this way si ugeri sema <laughs> nikamjengea ya mawe sasa hiyo ya mawe haja sijakuta amei but what I'm saying is that if God blesses you, please know there is a reason that God has blessed you. Don't complain. Just have the family as long as the Lord has blessed you. Remember others. It's a concern. That's what the Bible says. Be merciful to those. Actually, it starts by saying, be merciful to those who doubt. Doubt what? Doubt whether you love God. Doubt whether there is God. Those people that who doubt, do what? Love them. Not only that, then others snatch them. Kuna wengine ni kushika, wasingie motoni ni kuvuta. Yaani kuna wengine lazima uwe tayari, usiwache ndugu zako aende motoni. Kaa ukivuta tu. Unakaa ukivuta tu. Unakaa ukivuta tu kwa sababu who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? As believers God in put us here on earth just to think about ourselves. He wants us to minister to others. Those that doubt, we need to love them. 1 Corinthians 10, 24, people should be concerned about others and not just about themselves. 
In verse 22 and 23 of Jude, Jude mentions three different kinds of people and how we can help them. One, be merciful with the doubters. If anyone in the world should be merciful, it ought to be us Christians because God has had mercy on us. Amen for that. As believers, we need to be compassionate and reclaim those who are doubting. Some might have doubts about the Bible because of something they have heard our false teachers say. Others might be, have doubts about the Bible because they are immature. Instead of being so harsh to them or haughty or hurtful to them, let's love them. The second thing that he says, be evangelistic with the lost. In verse 23, Jude tells us to snatch others. We become evangelistic from the fire that, that can, we can save them. Snatch them from the fire and save them. This is talking about those who are lost on their way to hell because they have rejected what the Bible says. Lastly, he says, be careful with the corrupt. The last kind of individual mentioned in verse 23 is someone who has become spiritually corrupted by the flesh. It is possible that Jude isn't referring to three different people in these verses. He's just required, he's talking about one person who, because of doubting, uh, he is lost. We need to ask the Lord to save him. And because he is lost, we are trying to say he's, he is because he is corrupted in the flesh. We could be talking about one person. So what are we supposed to do? To love them. Bless the name of the Lord. And then finally, and this is where finally, 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 finally is by focusing on God. If there is something that has helped you, even in terms of calamity and disaster, is looking unto God. Looking unto God. Jude 1, 24 to 25 says, To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Savior, to glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. One of the hardest things to do in your spiritual life is to stay focused on God. That is hard. But that is what God is calling us to do. To stay focused on God. Because sometimes we wake up in the morning, we are focused, but before we get to the matato, destruction comes, or we receive phones, and so on and so forth. One of the reasons why it is hard to stay focused on God is because of our selfish nature. Romans 8, 7 says, focusing on yourself is the opposite of focusing on God. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God and ends up thinking more about self than God. That person ignores who God is and what he is doing. That is the message translation. The reason why we think more about ourselves than God is because we are naturally self-centered. You think about yourself more. What I'm going to do, where I'm going to be. So what, what is Jude trying to tell us? Jude gives us three ways that we are to focus on God. First, we need to focus on the power of God. Power of God. The power of God. We need to focus on the power of God. Not people being played tricks but on the power of God. None of us are strong enough to avoid a spiritual disaster on our own. That's why we need to focus on the power of God. We started by saying the children of Israel, because of doubt and unbelief, and they did not trust what God had said, they fell into sin, and they roamed the wilderness for 40 years, and they died there. But what we are saying is that we can depend on the power of God. What God says he can do, he can do. Jude tells us that God is able to keep you from falling. If he's able to keep you from falling, then we need to go to him so that he can keep us from falling. The word keep comes from a Greek word that was used for a shepherd watching over their sheep so they would not be attacked or killed by wild animals. That's what God is saying. He can keep us. He can protect us. Bless the name of the Lord. The second thing that he says is that we are going to focus on the promise of God. What God has promised even if it tarries, don't allow yourself to be taken out captive by people who promise you a quick one, a quick fix. Uh, if the deal is so good, think twice. Wait upon God. Present you before his glorious presence with our fault and with great joy. God has promised. If you trust him, he's going to present yourself to himself. He's going to take you to God our Father without fault. And that is the desire of our brother Jude. 
Jude tells us in verse 24 that God is able to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. Then he also tells us in the same verse the praise of God. Verse 25 that God deserves our praise because all glory, all majesty, all power, and all authority belong to him. One of the easiest things to do is to lose our focus. This morning I have brought you that message that you can avoid the disasters that are going to come and they can come on your way so that you don't focus you don't lose focus. I know we have cameras that focus. They can focus. They can be automatic focus. But you know, some of us had cameras. Professor, here a camera. Here it is. 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 Focus. Here it is. The focus can go off. But nowadays we have a camera. Ukipimisha tu, mombi hivi. Inafoka, sienye ndio inajivuruta, inajirudisha, baka inakuwanyesha. Sasa nisawa, inamweka kwa buka box. Hata isi mumu konazo. Sizi kona mna hiyo? Hebu tulenge mungu hivyo. To lose focus yake mungu. What is the result of focusing on God? Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, You will keep in perfect peace. All who trust in you, whose thoughts are focused or are fixed on you. That is the New Living Translation. I want to bring what I've been sharing to a close by saying this. If you look at the world, you will be distressed. Let me say again. When you look to the world, you will be distressed. When you look within you, because some of us do that, you will be depressed. But if you look at Christ, you will be at rest. Let me give you an illustration by myself. Last Sunday, I looked within myself, and man, I got depressed. I actually left and never sat there, went, whew, because I felt depressed. And I know there could be someone here looking at themselves, you feel depressed. But can I tell you the secret? Let's focus on God, then we'll be at rest. I want to say these words again. If you look at the world, you'll be di distressed. If you look within yourself, you'll be depressed. But if you focus on God, you'll be at rest. One of the ways to avoid spiritual disaster is to make sure you are focusing on the right things in life. What are you focused on this morning? What are you focused on this morning? Are there people here who are saying, Bishop, you're right. I have been focusing on the world and I feel depressed. I feel so distressed by looking at the world around me. I feel so distressed. Maybe you are saying, Bishop, pray for me. And I want to pray for you today. Or maybe you are saying like I did last Sunday. You have looked, you're looking within yourself and you look so depressed. We want to focus on God. Am I speaking to someone? If that is the cry of your heart, if you stand on your feet, I'll pray quickly as I sit down. If you're saying, I want to look, focus myself on God, I have looked at the world and I feel so distressed. I have looked within myself and I feel so depressed. But I want to look at Christ so that I can find my rest. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, this morning we want to praise and thank you for your words. And the opportunity we have that God you have given us to study the book of Jude. I pray Lord that it has been beneficial for your people Lord. We don't want to be deceived by the false teachers of our day and time. So help us to remember the things we have studied in this book and the warnings you have given to us. Help us to grow in our spiritual life and become mature Christians. Christians who understand the value of the Bible study, the, the value of prayer. Help us to stay in the circle of your love so that we can receive the fullness of your blessing. Help us to live in the hope of your coming and the expectation of our eternal life in heaven with you. Lord, we know that there are many people who have not yet accepted your word and trusted in your son. So we ask that you would use us 
to reach them before it is everlast everlastingly too late for them. And when the devil tries to distract us and get us thinking only of ourselves, help us, Lord, to focus on your power, to focus on your promise, and to give you the praise that, dear Father, you deserve from us every day. And, Lord God, those that, dear Father, feel so uh, uh, d d d d distressed by the world Lord I pray that you're going to bring hope into them those that are looking within themselves and feel so depressed Lord may they turn around and we want to focus on you so that we can be at rest yes. oh blessed Lord we want to bless your holy name yes. oh to Jesus I surrender oh to him Freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily. Live. Oh, I surrender. given your life to Jesus. And this morning as you came, you said, yes, today I'm going to give my life to Jesus. I'm going to have a hope of eternal life. I'm going to have hope of heaven. And you came saying that if that opportunity is given, you will receive the Lord. We want to give you that opportunity this morning. Are you here? And you want to give your life to Jesus. Jesus is the only one who can set you free from whatever bondage that holds you back from the blessings that God has released on your way. So if you want to receive Jesus Christ, lift up your hand. Don't be ashamed, don't be shy because this is a very special moment for you. This is a very special moment for you and this is the moment you can remember the rest of your days. I can see a hand over there. Can you help our brother? Can you help our brother? Else. They want to say today, 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 I'm going to give my life to Jesus. This could be the best day of your life. Are you there? Just lift up your hand. Somebody will see it and will help you. Just lift it up. Don't you worry. Don't fear about people. People, people, forget about people. Forget about people. Forget about people. Forget about people. The Lord bless you if you are lifting up your hand. If there is someone lifting up their hands there, please help them. Let them come who want to pray for you. Maybe you have not even lifted up your hand. But you are saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. Just walk to the front and we'll pray for you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you there? We want to give our lives to the Lord. The world, when you look at it, you feel so distressed. When you look within yourself, you feel so depressed. But let us focus on the Lord because there is hope. Let us lift up our hands towards the front as pastor prays for this man in the mighty name of Jesus.
Amen. Daktari, eh, mimi nafikiria nikikaa hapa taribu muda. <laughs>